Hello everyone and welcome to Hill Street. Today's story is, first they whistled, then they screamed. If you end up enjoying this story, please leave a like. And if you enjoy hearing stories from me, please subscribe and become a resident of Hill Street and let me know how I'm doing in the comments. Now, let's get to this nightmare. It was late at night when the car broke down. The engine failure stranding me somewhere in the middle of the valley. My phone said it was 2.30 a.m., but it had no service. And to think, I waste my time keeping it fully charged, only for it to disappoint me now when I need it most. I swear and kick my car, I curse my luck. I'll miss my meeting tomorrow, I won't close the deal, and my boss will give me hell for it. Eventually, I calm down and lean back against the car, staring at the dense woodland around me. If I remembered the maps well, there should be a town up ahead, somewhere, a little village in the middle of nowhere, and nothing. They might have a garage though. I began the trek, making sure to lock my cheap car behind me. The flashlight on my phone lights the way, and I begin my march down the paved tarmac. The wide beam illuminates my path as I keep to the right of the road. What a desolate and unfortunate walk. The scenery's nice though. It's pretty, in a way. The trees and their interlocking branches house a world completely unknown. But at the same time, I'd rather be in my car. I pull my jacket closer towards me as the wind howls slightly. After walking for about 20 minutes, I notice something strange. A car left abandoned in the road. It's an old Honda sedan, a 2009 model. Weird, I think. And then I continue on. Someone else must have had engine trouble. The night is silent, except for a faint noise made by the branches as they sway in the wind. Up above, the sky is clear, and a half moon shines dimly. It's lonely, peaceful. I feel completely at ease until I see an object lying on the ground. It's hard not to notice. A backpack, a dark orange thing just laying in the center of the road. I almost leave it be, but the boredom of the walk gets the better of me, and so I go to investigate. Maybe it belongs to someone in town, and I can return it to them. I check the bag. Inside is a stuffed teddy bear, worn down by age, and a water bottle, one that's completely empty. Digging further, I find some other things a few pieces of cracked and chipped porcelain, and a radio transceiver. I almost cut my hand on the pottery shards. I wasn't expecting them, but I move past the debris and lift out the transceiver. The radio is powered on. Someone left the bag not too long ago. Either that, or the weather wasn't good at destroying it. A faint static echoes through the device. I sling the bag over my back and keep walking. I toy with the radio a little on my lonely march, switching it between channels. The radio itself looks fine, but it must be broken. Not a single station is picked up, just static across every frequency. Disappointing, I thought. Just then, the radio spoke. Running. Masks. Emergency. Purple. Unsafe. Don't listen to the screams. And then nothing. Understandably, that freaked me out. And so I put the radio back in the bag. 
for a brief moment, I considered turning around. The message was freaky, but I was only a few minutes away from where the town should be. Various thoughts and rationalities flickered through my head before I made the choice to keep walking. What a mistake I made. The night was dead silent for the next few minutes. Hardly a sound from the whole valley. Barely anything. Until I heard a distant noise from the trees. I heard it faintly at first. A little voice in the forest. It sounded like someone whistling. A small noise, faint and shrill, coming from the woods to my left. I stopped to hear it better, but when I stopped, the whistling stopped. Confused, I kept walking, the whistling picking up again, and so I stopped once more. So did the whistling. I went to take a step forward, and the whistling began again. Who's doing that? I called out into the trees. The whistling stopped. I stood staring into the forest where it had come from. I moved closer to the tree line on my left and pointed my phone's flashlight deeper into the bush. When I did, I nearly jumped back. A guy was sitting crouched on the forest floor, looking up at me. A bright purple mask covered his face. It was incredibly detailed and looked to be modeled after some sort of animal. White sculpted fangs lining the mask's mouth. Leave me alone, I shouted at the man. The figure kept looking at me and then slowly, without saying a word, just turned around and walked into the forest. A few seconds passed while I waited for him to be gone. After he left, I turned back to the road and started heading to the village. This time, at something of a sprint. But as I did, I heard the whistling again, loud and ominous. Echoing through the trees, I resolved to ignore it. I was almost there. But then, another voice joined the whistling, this time to my right, and so there was one on either side of the road. They seemed to keep pace with me as I ran. I ran faster. The shrill whistling continued on either side of me, a third voice joined in. This one started screeching. A horrible, guttural cry that echoed down the highway. I started to panic. Genuine fear growing inside of me. Sweat beaded on my forehead from the exertion of running. A fourth voice joined in. And then a fifth. Both screaming. Both of them just to the right of me. Both of them keeping pace. I'm being tricked or something, I thought. What do they want? Why are they chasing me? I didn't know who they were or what they were doing, but some instinct of mine told me not to stop, not to wait and find out. I was almost out of breath when the sixth and seventh voices joined in the chorus around me. These ones, though, they weren't just screaming. They were loud, but they were also speaking. Cure purity. Spread. Join. Cure purity. Spread. Join. Cure purity. Spread. Join. Those words over and over. Suddenly, a piercing migraine gripped my skull, and the pain and the exhaustion forced me to stop. No one approached me, but the voices grew louder, all of them screaming those words. Suddenly, I felt a terrible pain on my face. I pressed my hand to my forehead, 
only for it to come away red. A dark scarlet blood coated my hand. I then realized that more blood was dripping from my eyes, falling like tears and dripping onto the tarmac below me. I pressed my hand to my face again. It was damp and warm. Liquid poured over my hand. A piece of my cheek fell onto the road below me. A piece of flesh about two inches across. With horror, I realized my face was falling away, spilling onto the ground beneath me, bright red chunks and pieces splashing down. A large piece of nose and eyebrow, loose clumps of skin and tissue. But when I moved my hand across the ripped and broken places, where there should have been holes, I didn't find any. In the place where my flesh had fallen away, a smooth porcelain had replaced it. Over half my face was now pottery. A few remaining patches of flesh disturbing the clean surface. Then I felt my left eye loosen and then I lost vision in it. And then seconds later I fell onto the floor with a dull thud. I screamed. I could barely be heard over the deafening voices surrounding me. The people who had been in the trees were now grouped in a circle around me. Each one wore a bright mask, streaked with or fully purple. Each mask looked animal-like in nature, but none of them looked like a specific creature. Blood streamed down my face and began to block the vision in my remaining eye. I had tried to run, but found that my legs couldn't move. I thought it was over, that everything would end here and now. But it didn't. I remembered the words I had heard over the radio. Don't listen to the screams. I threw my hands over my ears and screamed as loud as I could to drown out their noise. They didn't stop me, didn't come near me. They just screamed louder, and so did I. Eventually, I felt a change. The pain in my face stopped and the huddled figures around me grew quieter. It lasted for several minutes, and I must have damaged my vocal cords, but I never stopped. I kept screaming until my body physically wasn't able to make noise. By that time, the figures were gone, disappeared as if they never existed. I held my hands up to my face, where once had been porcelain, was now human skin, no holes, no tears, and no wounds. But my left eye still lay on the floor. An unfortunate loss, but I could have lost a lot more that night. Day came, and eventually I got to the town. It was completely empty, and looked like it had been for a long time. I don't know exactly what happened that night on the road. But I can tell you this, whatever attacked me, whatever damaged my sight, it's still out there. It hasn't been stopped. I can tell. I can feel it. It's out there watching and waiting, somewhere in the forest, patient and sinister, bidding its time until the next car breaks down.